By definition, the All-Star Game is a collection of heroes, and heroes provide heroics. Last year, Cal Ripken Jr. delivered the game-winning home run. And in 1989, it was Bo Jackson who led off in All-Star style. Ball hit deep, way back, way back. Davis looks up, it's out of here. Bo Jackson. The one-two pitch is swung on and whacked into right. Parker charging. Here comes the runner downing the throw to Carter. They got him at the plate. In 1970, Pete Rose provided one of the most memorable plays in All-Star Game history. In the 12th inning, he flashed his flamboyant form, striving to win the game for the National League. Up the middle, Rose is on his way around. Rose is coming to the plate, so the throw. He's in. It's all over. The National League wins. Not only did Rose's bone-jarring collision end the game, but he may have affected the promising career of catcher Ray Fossey. The name of the game is to try to win the game. I didn't try to hurt anybody. If you if you look at the film, I actually tried to start the slide head first, but Ray was up the line, straight on the line, and I said to myself, if I slide head first, first of all, I'm going to be out. Secondly, I'm pro probably going to break both collarbones. Uh, the impact was tremendous from Pete Rose in that, but uh, it was a play that uh, that probably would happen 99 out of 100 times because Pete likes to slide head first. He tried to change his direction, and in the meantime, he saw me, and uh, the collision occurred. In 1955, Stan Musial's 12th inning home run broke up the game, in which the National League overcame a 5-0 deficit. And Ted Williams decided the 1941 Classic with a three-run homer in the ninth inning. Williams swings, there's a high drive, going deep, deep, it is a home run! Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth, of course, provided plenty of thrills. The Bambino, in fact, left his personal calling card at the first All-Star Game. And who knows what memories lie in store for us? On Tuesday, Excuse me, getting a glass of water here at San Diego. Uh, Tim, in your customary modesty, you managed to leave out uh, your most memorable All-Star moments. Tell us about the most painful, and by the way, if you need some Evian, we got some here. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the most painful was after the 67 All-Star game. That was the game in which uh, Tony Perez hit the game-winning homer off Catfish Hunter in the 15th inning. And Tom Seaver got the save, and he was throwing so hard that I received a bone bruise and swelling right below the index finger of my left hand to the point where for about 10 days or two weeks after the All-Star game, I had to hit with this finger. Uh, uh, extended and to say that my hitting was impaired is an understatement uh, but Tom Seaver was throwing as hard that day as uh, as he was at any other time in his career well Timmy all that matters is us that you can hold that microphone correctly and we'll see you later this afternoon we'll be back from uh, San Diego in a minute stay with us You ever try that? Well, I try it every weekend. I try. <laughs> Should be a great uh, game Tuesday, right? Uh, the stars come out, no matter who wins or loses, always a good time. Reminder that our CBS Sports coverage of the 63rd All-Star Game will get underway on Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Right now, they're set for the Cardinals and the Dodgers. Sean McDonough and Tim McCarver will have it for you in just a moment. For Jim Cott, I'm Pat O'Brien in San Diego. Enjoy the game. We'll see you back here on Tuesday night. Have a nice day, everybody. Jimmy and Chris for Newprin. Jimmy, tennis at your age? Ooh, if I can do it, you can, Chris. Not me. Tennis is tough. So are kids. You're telling me. My back, my shoulders. You know what to do for pain. I noop it. Noop it. With Newprin. Hey, strong medicine. It works where it hurts. Works for me. So how about it, Chris? Maybe Alex someday. I'll be waiting. Noop it. For back, joint, or muscle pain. Newprin, the body pain medicine. Last year's game MVP, Cal Ripken.
Ash brother, Mark McGuire. Seattle slugger, Ken Griffey Jr. World Series hero, Kirby Puckett. The Battle of the Best, the All-Star Game. This is CBS. Game for the first time since May 16th. Todd Zeal's two-run shot in the sixth was the difference as St. Louis sent Tom Candiotti and the Dodgers down to defeat 3-1. CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. Today, from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, it's game three of a four-game series between the Dodgers and the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals have won four of their last five. They're within three and a half of first place Pittsburgh in the National League East. While the Dodgers occupy the cellar in the West, 14 games back of Cincinnati. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Los Angeles. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Tim McCarver, and it's great to have you with us. The St. Louis Cardinals in contention in the National League East, despite a young pitching staff that has been outstanding to this point. Four of their five pitchers, very young. The all-star game pitcher is Bob Tewksbury. And get this, their pitching has been so good that they've given up 25 runs over their last 16 games. Now, that is the fewest number of runs over any 16-game span in this century given up by Cardinal pitching staffs, and that is truly remarkable. Well, they have been a pleasant surprise. The Dodgers have been a big disappointment. Tim, there are a lot of disappointing teams in Major League Baseball this year, but the Dodgers have to be at the top of that list. With the big payroll, of course, they're in last place, 14 games behind the Cincinnati Reds, and the Dodgers haven't finished in last place since 1905 in the National League, I think in large part this year due to Eric Davis and Darryl Strawberry missing over 80 games. Last place a possibility this year if they don't get things turned around in a hurry. The pitching matchup this afternoon for the Dodgers, Oral Hershiser for the Cardinals. Cardinals Mark Clark will have the first pitch of the ball game from Dodger Stadium in just a moment. CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. Today's game is brought to you by Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. And by Subway, sandwiches and salads for today's healthy lifestyles. Not long ago at Subway headquarters, our founder, Fred... And as you can see, there is still a tarp on the pitching mound and the home plate area as well. Oral Hershiser is still out in the Dodger bullpen, warming up. He'll make the start today for Los Angeles, opposed by right-hander Mark Clark. Oral Hershiser is not all the way back uh, yet. He has not pitched a complete game in his last 50 starts. But last night, we had a chance to talk with Oral and ask him just how much has he come back from that devastating shoulder injury. Reconstruction of my shoulder was an amazing process that Dr. Joe put me back together. But what I've really noticed that uh, last year when the uh, surgery went so well and I came back, if somebody said that's all you're going to have, I would have taken it. But now this year, uh, spring training was even better. And now here comes the all-star break, and I'm feeling even better. So I really haven't reached a plateau yet. My strength and my abilities are getting better and better. That injury and its uh, operation, usually referred to as the Tommy John uh, operation, that was performed on Tommy back in 1974. It took him two years to come back, and Hershiser only about eight months to come back. But he is uh, really a remarkable story. And with that bulldog tenacity, the sort, of course, is nicknamed Bulldog. Appropriate. We saw Oral about to depart the bullpen and make his way into the dugout. The ground crew is out at home plate and the pitcher's mound, removing the tarps. And Tommy Lasorda is discussing the situation with the umpiring crew. The lineup cards being exchanged at home plate. It has been an interesting week from a weather standpoint here in Southern California. There was a tropical storm off the coast that made it a very muggy and warm week here in Los Angeles. We've had rain off and on this morning. It is again very humid. And there was an earthquake. We are told about 60 miles east of here about 45 minutes ago that registered 5.1 on the Richter scale. It happened at 1117 local time here in Los Angeles. And we here in the broadcast booth felt just a brief tremor, but you have experienced this before, and the antenna immediately went up from your experience at the World Series. And Big earthquake, of course, struck the Bay Area. All of our uh, power went out. Uh, Al Michaels was right next to me on the floor. <laughs> 
As they continue to get ready for today's game, we'll take a break, and we'll be back with the first pitch of today's game in just a moment. Homestand for Los Angeles. The ground crew continues to prepare the field, and a sparse crowd is on hand here at the moment. They're not accustomed to seeing rain in this part of the country. Even in good weather, mm -hmm. arrive late, leave early. Of course, that has been the habit habits of uh, the fans here, which are marvelous fans here in uh, the Los Angeles area. However, this year, because of the riots uh, uh, in early May, the Dodgers are down 254,000 in attendance. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is very, very strange. And you would think that the drop off in the performance level of the Dodgers would have something to do with the sure. diminished number of folks coming through the gates. An interesting trade made last night in Major League Baseball. If you didn't see this morning's paper, perhaps you missed it. Last night, the Pittsburgh Pirates traded third baseman Steve Bouchel to the Chicago Cubs in exchange for left-handed pitcher Danny Jackson. Your thoughts, Tim? Well, I think one of the stranger things about that move is that the Pittsburgh Pirates got rid of John Smiley, a left-handed pitcher, 20-game winner last year in spring training. Uh, he went to the Minnesota Twins, where he is thriving. Danny Jackson has had arm problems. Steve Bouchelle is a quality third baseman. He was batting 249 at the time with eight home runs and 35 RBIs. Uh, I think Bouchelle right now, I think Bouchel stands to help the Cubs more than Jackson can help the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the Dodgers take the field. Led onto the field by Daryl Strawberry. And Oral Hershiser makes his way to the mound. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom Lasorda with the opportunity yet again to make another friend before the ball game begins. <laughs> we assume there are no spying devices anywhere in that glove, but Tom should be careful. Well, let's check the St. Louis lineup that will go up against Tom Lasorda's charges this afternoon. Milt Thompson leads off in left field. Ozzie Smith, the shortstop. Ray Langford batting third in center field. The cleanup hitter is first baseman Andres Galarraga. Batting fifth, the third baseman, Todd Zeal. Brian Jordan is the right fielder batting sixth. Tom Pagnazzi does the catching. He's batting seventh. Tim Jones at second base bats eighth and batting ninth. The pitcher, Mark Clark. We mentioned that Oral Hershiser has had no complete games covering a one and a half year period in his last 50 starts. However, he has gone at least five innings in all 17 starts this year. So Oral Hershiser, seven and six, with a 3.34 earned run average. And he will be backed up by this defense. Derek Davis is in left field. Tom Goodwin in there for the ailing Brett Butler. Butler with problems to his right shoulder, diving to make a catch several weeks ago. Daryl Strawberry back in the lineup. He's in right field. Dave Hansen at third base. Jose Offerman at shortstop. Lenny Harris will be the second baseman. A fine young rookie hitter, Eric Karros, is at first base. And Mike Sosha behind the plate. Mike has caught more games than any other Dodger. And, of course, Hershiser on the mound. And defense, a big difference between these two teams. The Cardinals first in the league in fielding. The Dodgers are last. Last night, a rough night for Daryl Strawberry. He went 0 for 4 in the loss to the Cardinals. He struck out all four times, and he heard some loud boos here. Daryl said it was the loudest that he has been booed since he came to Los Angeles a year and a half ago. Joe Torrey, he says it seems like nobody wants to win the National League East, so we might as well grab it. And his team is certainly in position to do just that. Only three and a half games behind Pittsburgh. This is game 10 of a West Coast road trip for Torrey and the Cardinals. And St. Louis is six and three out west following their three to one win over Los Angeles last night. The start of the game delayed about seven minutes as they prepared the field. And here's Milt Thompson to get us underway. Just close friends and family in attendance at the moment. Milt Thompson at 3.08 with four homers and 12 runs batted in. He had a home run last night. Off Tom Candiotti into the bullpen in right field. Tries to bunt his way on. 
And it's a strike, says home plate umpire Bruce Fremming. Kind of the long and the short of it. Milt Thompson with a home run in last night's game, and then he tries to bunt his first time up today. Hersheiser. Nearly called a strike by Bruce Fremming. He committed the first balk of the day. Turned to call it a strike and then thought better of it. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Hit hard in the right field. A base hit for Milt Thompson. We have introduced you to home plate umpire Bruce Fremming. The rest of the umpiring crew, Ed Montague at first base. Tom Hallion, who'll work the All-Star game, that is calling the plays at second. One. And Mike Winters is at third. Now, Ozzie Smith, speaking of the All-Star game, he was voted the starting National League All-Star shortstop for a record 10th straight year. As you saw his numbers, they are worthy of a trip to San Diego. 297 average. Cardinals with four representatives on the National League All-Star team. Tom Pagnazzi, Ozzie Smith, Lee Smith, and Bob Tewksbury. Thompson has stolen 12 bases. And Smith looks at a strike, one and one. One thing that helps Hershiser in situations like this, he gets a lot of ground balls, about two out of every three balls that are made contact by the hitter or on the ground. Good time to hit and run right here and Joe Torre likes to do that. Thompson not running with that pitch. It's spilled into the third base seats. One and two on Ozzie Smith. Ozzie missed a couple of weeks with the chicken pox. Well, he's healthy now and ready to make his 12th appearance in the All-Star game in his 10th consecutive start. Wasn't it Roy Campanella who said uh, you got to have a lot of little boy in you to play this game? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you have to come down with little boys maladies though, does it? <laughs> Indeed it doesn't. <laughs> and Ozzie's fared well since returning to action on July 1st. He's hit 342. Off speed pitch just outside. Two balls, two strikes. Smith at the plate with Lankford on deck. Thompson at first with nobody out in the top of the first no score. Bucky Dent through the signs for Thompson and Smith. Quick throw to first and Thompson is back safely. Milt's only been thrown out four times trying to steal. Kaiser trying to strike out Ozzie Smith for the first time ever. Thompson running. The pitch is a ball. The throw on Hopper not in time. And Thompson has stolen his 13th base of the year. Now with an excellent jump off Oral Hershiser. And he's into second base easily. Notice how he goes straight in. Stand up slide see the hook slide more and more in baseball disappearing and when you're going in to steal second base there's really no sense in trying to hook away from the tag. Only the Montreal Expos have stolen more bases than the St. Louis Cardinals this year. The Redbirds now with 113. 3 2 pitch fouled off his foot. What is a stand up slide? Well, it's a slide where your momentum into the bag allows you to stand up. What allows you to stop allows you to stand up. the batting instructor of the Dodgers looking on with Tommy Lasorda. Dodgers losing last night 3 to 1 to the Cardinals after beating St. Louis 2 to 1 on Thursday night. 3-2 pitch. Base hit right center field. Tom 
Thompson is being waved around, and he will score, and the Cardinals lead one to nothing. Ozzie Smith with his 20th run batted in of the year. Center fielder, Ray Langford. Two hits to start the ball game for St. Louis. Smith at first, still nobody out. Here's Ray Langford. Langford runs well. Hanson is in on the grass at third. The breaking ball is in for a strike. moved into the three spot in the batting order by Joe Torrey he strikes out a little bit too much to lead off he has struck out 76 times this year that's the most by any player in the National League more ideal in the three hole than he is leading off a ball game he strikes out about once every five times up Kaiser surrendered a single to Thompson to start the game. Thompson stole second and scored on a base hit by Ozzie Smith. It was 19 stolen bases, and he's only been thrown out four times. Ozzie Smith, 15 consecutive years of 20-plus steals, which would tie Lou Brock for the second longest such streak in Major League history. Only Hannes Wagner had a longer streak, 18 consecutive years of 20 steals or more from 1898 through 1915. Not bad for the oldest shortstop in baseball. Ozzie, 37 years old. And one of the big reasons that the Cardinals are negotiating in halting fashion as far as giving Ozzie a multi-year contract. Double play ball to second. Langford slip coming out of the batter's box. So it's an easy 4-6-3 twin killer. <laughs> Offerman turned it, taking the throw from Harris, and Karros finished it off. Ball was not hit uh, very sharply to second base, but watch how long Ozzie Smith stands up, and the throw by Offerman gets him down. That throw, when Offerman, the shortstop, drops down, he wants the base runner to get down. So it prevents him from taking out but out of there, but Ozzie Smith staying up an awful long time going into second base. So two outs and the base is now empty in the first. It's one nothing St. Louis and Andres Galarraga, the cleanup hitter, takes strike one. Joe Torre sees signs of Galarraga coming on lately. He's up to 189, two homers, ten runs driven in. It is first two home runs as a Cardinal in consecutive games on this West Coast trip last Sunday and Monday. And he had his first three hit game of the season on Tuesday. He's behind in the count here one and two. You can see how the power departments of Andres Galarraga have diminished since five years ago. Weekly to second, Lenny Harris throws him out, and that's all for St. Louis in the first. Hersheiser gives up one run on two Cardinal hits, and after half an inning, it's 1-0 St. Louis. Car and Driver Magazine. At Dodger Stadium, Mark Clark takes the mound, working with a 1-0 lead. He's a 24-year-old, 6'5 right-hander from Bath, Illinois. And the lineup he will face this afternoon has Jose Offerman leading off at shortstop. Tom Goodwin in center field. Eric Davis, the left fielder. Daryl Strawberry, the cleanup hitter in right field. Eric Karros at first base. Batting sixth, the third baseman, Dave Hansen. Lenny Harris is the second baseman. Mike Sosha, the catcher, bats eighth. And batting ninth, the pitcher, Oral Hershiser. Mark Clark, in his last outing, became the second rookie this year to pitch a shutout in the National League. The other is a pitcher for the Dodgers, Pedro Estacio. So Mark Clark off a strong start will have these folks behind him. Milt Thompson, the left fielder. 
Ray Lankford in center field. Brian Jordan, he will not play football anymore. He's with the Cardinals. Todd Zeal at third base. The Wizard of Oz at shortstop. Tim Jones at second base. Slick fielding Andres Galarraga at first. Tom Pagnazzi behind the plate. And Mark Clark on the mound. Or as we would say in New England, where I'm from, Mark Clark. Mark Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Jose Offerman ready to face Clark. Offerman hitting 262. He has knocked in 15 runs. He squared a bun and took it back. Both corner men in on the grass for St. Louis. Zeal in at third. Galarraga is now backed up a half step at first. Again, he shows bunt. This time it's a strike, one and one. It took Tommy Lasorda a while to come up with his lineup this morning. He had a check on the health of Mike Sharperson. He's been seeing most of the action lately at second base. Sharperson bothered by a sore right groin that kept him out of the lineup today. Brett Butler was a question mark, but he was scratched with the sore shoulder that caused him to leave last night's game. Things continue to go poorly in 1992. Tommy Lasorda. Offerman lines it right into the glove with Todd Zeal. But as Lasorda said before the game, I'm fine, I'm healthy, I feel good, and everything is wonderful except our record. And Mike Sharperson hopes he's fine for Tuesday night. He is the Dodgers' lone participant in the All-Star game. Only 196 at-bats. But a 330 hitter, usually platooning. But I think uh, that gives you an idea of the state of the Dodgers. They have a platoon player going to the All-Star game on Tuesday night. Tom Goodwin looked at strike one. Goodwin in his second tour of duty this year with the Dodgers. In all, he's been to the plate two times with one hit, the single. He has one RBI to his credit. He takes a sinker low, one and one. Goodwin was recalled from Triple-A Albuquerque for the second time this year on July 9th. He was also here from May 24th through June 10th. Two balls and a strike. Goodwin will be followed by Eric Davis. And when you think of Dodger candidates for the All-Star team, you certainly think of Davis and Strawberry and Hershiser ahead of Sharperson. A rare misplay in the field by Ozzie Smith. We'll wait to see how they score it. It was hit to his left. But of all the wizard usually handles, and the Dodgers have a one-out base runner in the bottom of the first. Only the fifth error all year by Ozzie Smith. The Cardinals, by the way, lead the National League in fewest errors committed with 54. Well, that is a ball that Ozzie Smith usually just sucks up. And that is his first error in 43 games it played 20 or rather 42 consecutive games without an error and that is the longest such streak by a shortstop in the majors this year wow 13 errors and 913 chances good one at first with one out we're in the bottom of the first the Cardinals lead one to nothing the batter is Eric Davis the ball low Eric hitting 236. He was 0 for 4 last night. Good win, a threat to run. He had 48 stolen bases in Albuquerque, the AAA affiliate of the Dodgers, last year. He can fly. He had 26 for the Albuquerque Dukes this year in just 69 games. Of course, he is running against one of the strongest arms in the National League, and that's Tom Pagnazzi. Pagnazzi's thrown out 22 of the 66 runners trying to steal against him this year, a 33% rate. Goodwin is on the move. The pitch high and tight. Pagnazzi's throw got him in plenty of time for Tim Jones to apply the tag. Two outs and the base is now empty for Los Angeles. They used to have... Uh, those contests between games of doubleheaders where catchers used to throw balls in the barrel. Well, this ball would have been in the barrel. You get like 50 bucks in the minor leagues. They do that all the time. This ball would have been in the barrel right there. Perfect throw by Pagnazzi to get Goodwin. Davis hit a broken background ball to second. 
And that's it for Los Angeles in the first. After one at Dodger Stadium, it's one nothing St. Louis. One nothing St. Louis after one inning here at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. The Cardinals have Todd Zeal leading off the second, then Brian Jordan and Tom Pagnazzi. Zeal, after a very slow start, is up to 260. Five home runs, including a two-run homer last night, and 30 runs driven in. We mentioned at the top of the show this afternoon, the Cardinals went 49 games without hitting more than one home run in a game before they had the two last night. The first time since May 16th, that's a base hit. And Zeal continues hot. Three hits now for St. Louis. Number three. Right fielder, Brian Jordan. The reserve selected to the National League All-Star team this week by manager Bobby Cox and National League President Bill White, Darren Dalton, and Tom Pagnazzi. The reserve catchers, Will Clark and John Cruck, first baseman. We mentioned that Mike Sharperson is the only Dodger representative, and he'll be backing up at second along with Craig Biggio. And these are the starters elected by you, the fans, in 1992. Inside to Brian Jordan. Brian has been in a slump ever since announcing his decision to stay with baseball and give up football. His averages dip below the Mendoza line. He's just three for his last 32. A strike, and it's one ball and one strike. That outfield grass is still very, very wet. And I think uh, if you're a base runner, you try to take advantage of that. You may be seeing the Cardinals and the Dodgers both trying to take advantage of the wet grass in the outfield and taking an extra base on balls hit to the outfield. That's where a lot of pitchers have started to pitch. Brian Jordan is inside. He's got that football swing, good power the other way, but he likes to extend his arms. Most guys who have played football have built up their chest muscles and their shoulders to the point where they have a difficult time getting around on the balls inside. Chopped slowly down to third. Hansen has to hurry, and his throw is not in time. Looked like Hansen had trouble with both the footing and the grip on the ball. It wasn't much of a throw, and even if he had plenty on it, it probably wasn't going to be enough to get the speedy Jordan. Yeah, also guys who have played a lot of football, and certainly Brian Jordan has, they can run, and they can run from a flat-footed stance. Brian Jordan, great acceleration, getting down the line quickly, and Hanson with no chance on throwing him out. So St. Louis had back-to-back -back hits to start the first. They scored one run in the first. Now they have back-to-back -back base hits here in the second for Tom Pagnazzi. The all-star reserve catcher hitting 282. The ball high as Pagnazzi turned to bunt. Four homers for Tom, three of them away from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. He entered this season not having hit a home run outside of Bush Stadium. That bunt attempt was not an attempt at all, I don't think. I think that was a decoy to give the infielders a chance to move around a little bit. He's certainly hitting here. And he hits it fair down the left field line. That will score at least one. Zeal's on to score. Jordan's being waved in. He will score, and it's 3-0 St. Louis. A two-run double for Tom Pagnazzi. He's driven in 28 runs this season. Number eight. Usually he hits the ball the other way, but this one is drilled by Dave Hansen at third base. And Scoring that definitely it. was not a bunt, Tim. No, definitely not. No. <laughs> if it was, it was hard. You can see Bucky Dent wasting no time and sending Jordan with nobody out. You have to be sure, and Dent was sure Jordan scores without a play. Still no outs here in the second. And the pitch gets away from Sosha. And Pagnazzi moves to third. Looked like a pitch that could have been easily handled by Sosha. The first to go for a catcher. You see Sosha not getting down right there. A lot of times the knees are aching, the ankles are aching. Those are the uh, two areas of a catcher's legs that uh, give them the most problem when they are an aging ball club. And as you see, the Los Angeles Dodgers 
with the oldest team age in the National League. Not only that, but the oldest pitching staff, too. Mm -hmm. Pitching staff, the average age of better than 31 years. But the Dodgers struggle to score runs. The infield is in here in the second. St. Louis already leading three to nothing, and they have a runner at third with nobody out. One and one, the count on Tim Jones, the second baseman hitting 195. That was a pass ball charge to Mike Social. Hard to believe that that is eight pass balls already for Mike Social wow. this season. Bear in mind that part of that comes from handling the knuckleballer Tom Candiotti. The one two lifted to shallow center. Goodwin on the wet grass makes the running catch. And it was hit so shallow that Pagnazzi was playing it down the line. He's at third now with one out. Talked about how fast a runner Goodwin is. A little shaky on that play. But he does the job. Fine play by Tom Goodwin, the center fielder. With the pitcher up, Sean, you'd think, well, it's an automatic uh, squeeze possibility, but this guy can hit. Matter of fact, Clark has had a hit in each of his last four games. For the season, he's at 286, four for 14 with one RBI, and the infield remains in. With Clark up, one out and a runner at third. That four-game hitting streak leaves Clark one shy of the longest streak by a pitcher this season. Philadelphia's Don Robinson hit safely in five consecutive games until his streak was snapped while pinch hitting on Wednesday. A pitch out, no squeeze there, one and one now on Clark. I think sometimes the approach a pitcher takes will talk a team into pinch hit, uh, to pitching out. Saw that feeble swing on the breaking ball by Clark, and then Mike Sosia says, well, if he's swinging that bad, maybe Joe Torrey will put the squeeze on. It's still a possibility. Just outside, two balls and one strike on Clark. Joe Torrey out to Buggy Dent. Relayed back in to Clark. See if Clark would give it away and no flinching by Mark Clark. You know, I don't think I've ever seen that. I've seen it in sacrifice situations, but not in squeeze situations. Hershiser trying to get Clark to commit early if he was going to squeeze. He turns the butt now. He missed it. And they have Pagnazzi trapped. High throw in the left field and the run scores. So Mike Sosha is enduring a personal nightmare. His pass ball got Pagnazzi to third, and his throwing error when they had Pagnazzi trapped between the plate and third allows the run to score. It's 4-0 St. Louis. Seventh error this year for Sosha in addition to the eight pass balls. We mentioned the Cardinals led the National League with the fewest errors. Well, the Dodgers have the most, and Sosha on a routine rundown to Dave Hansen throws it wild. And Pagnazzi scores easily. If you're the runner at third, you try not to break too soon. And you could see Pagnazzi waiting, waiting, waiting. But Clark bunted through it. But the Dodgers, with the throwing error, scores the fourth run. Not making any excuses for the Dodgers, but this has got to be an exhausted mm. ball club. They played three consecutive doubleheaders, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday against the Montreal Expos. They also played one Friday against Philadelphia. 85 errors. The league lead. Clark strikes out. Boy, Sosha's really lost. Perhaps still rattled by the pass ball in the air. Now he thought that was the third out and started to head to the dugout. It's only the second out and the first strikeout of the day for Oral Hershiser. Number 25, Mill Robson. Embarrassing is a word that I hate to use uh, on a ball field because I've been out there and I'll tell you there's no place to hide but I know if uh, he could crawl in a hole right now Mike Sosha would 
probably the last thing the most embarrassing mm -hmm. leaving the leaving the field with only two outs. You can't blame him for being anxious to get into the dugout. The 0 1 pitch to Bill Thompson is low Thompson single to start the ball game he stole second in the first inning and scored the first run. Cardinals got one in the first three here in the second. They lead four zip. Offerman boots it and post another error for Los Angeles. That is the 20th error of the year for Offerman more than any other shortstop in the National League. There is a book out called How to Play Baseball the Dodger Way. Well, I'm not too sure that this inning would be included as a chapter in that book in the revised mm. edition. Ugly inning for the Dodgers. Mm. And must be something about us, Tim, because the last time we saw them on CBS was against Cincinnati. They committed three errors in the first inning of that ball game against the Reds, went on to lose 11 to 1. Thompson on the move as Smith slapped it to short. Offerman handles that play, and finally the inning ends. Three more for the Cardinals. And after an inning and a half, it's 4 nothing, St. Louis. If you're the runner on at third base and the, if you don't, the thing is you don't want to break too quickly from third. If you do, the pitcher will pitch out. Watch how Tom Pagnazzi waits at third until the ball is almost released. And then Clark bunched through it and Sosha's wild throw over the head of Hanson allows the fourth run to score. Four nothing St. Louis as the Dodgers come up in the second against Mark Clark. Daryl Strawberry hitting 240. And as we mentioned, he was 0 for 4 last night with four strikeouts. And there is a lot of talk here in Los Angeles that perhaps Strawberry should have spent a rehab stint in the minor leagues. He Talk Tommy Lasorda and general manager Fred Player out of a stint at Albuquerque, so he felt like he needed to get back in right away at the major league level and help the Dodgers. But since his return from injury, he hasn't been much help. He's at 190. Ahead here, three and one. Strawberry, then Eric Karros, and Dave Hansen. man is on for Los Angeles in the second. That's the first walk issued by either pitcher this afternoon. Strawberry at first. He has stolen three bases and has been thrown out once. And here's Eric Karos, the Dodger leader in home runs and runs batted in. With 10 and 32 respectively. He leads all rookies in the National League in home runs and RBIs. Big strong guy from Hackensack, New Jersey. And the Dodgers have been criticized in recent years for not developing much of their own talent, but this is one guy who looks like he will be around for a while. I, I think the uh, we mentioned the AAA affiliate of the Dodgers. I think that might have something to do with it. Albuquerque New Mexico is very high up ball carries very well and through the years the Dodgers have had young players do exceptionally well at that ballpark and in that town and they come to the big leagues and some fizzle bad swing at a pitch out of the strike zone and Karros is the first out of the inning that's the first strikeout this afternoon from Mark Clark. Strawberry at first now with one out. Two names that come to mind. Greg Brock. Remember Greg Brock a decade ago and Mike Marshall. Big years. Mike Marshall but won the trip there. Indeed they can be. Makes it very difficult to evaluate your own prospects. Dave Hansen. Another young player. Whom the Dodgers are high. He takes strike one. Pitch is high 
that away. Joe Coleman, the Cardinal pitching coach, talking about Mark Clark, an interesting term. He said he's a power pitcher, but not a strikeout pitcher. A power pitcher that puts the ball in play. The St. Louis rotation, as we mentioned at the outset, consists of Major League ERA leader Bob Tewksbury, and then four pitchers aged 25 and under. Clark was 24 in May. Real Corbier turned 25 in April. Omar Oliveras turned 25 on Monday. Donovan Osborne just turned 23 in June. And there are some impressive numbers being posted by these three Cardinal rookies. 14 and 8. If you're wondering about the rest of the National League, the rest of the National League is 31 and 56. So the three Cardinal rookies have won almost half as many games as the other 11 teams mm -hmm. combined in the National League. 14 victories by Cardinal rookie pitchers, the most of any team in the majors. The rookies on the other 11 National League teams are a combined 31. And 57. And the rain has returned to Dodger Stadium. Two balls and two strikes on Hanson. One out of runner at first. We're in the second. It's four nothing St. Louis. And now the count is full. You send the runner right here. Now, I think you, even though you're trailing four to nothing, we talked about how he's a contact pitcher. He doesn't strike out a lot of guys. 16 strikeouts and eight starts this year. So I think I'd send Strawberry here. The Dodgers have very little to lose at this point, and they're really struggling to score runs. Strawberry does not move. It's a base hit. Dave Hansen extends his hitting streak to a career high seven straight games. He had a pinch hit single in the ninth last night to keep that streak alive. Number 29. So Daryl Strawberry by not going uh, didn't go to third base. I think the natural inclination for teams when they're going poorly is to be too passive and to, and to get too much back on their heels to play it too much a base at a time. I think if you take the opposite approach and play with a little more wild abandon uh, abandon when uh, when things are going poorly for you you'd be better off. Mm -hmm. You might make something happen generate a little enthusiasm yeah. and yeah. get yourselves out of the doldrums. What do you have to lose. When you're 14 out at this point of the year, very little. There's a double play ball to Smith. Jones turns it. 6-4-3, and that ends the inning. After two in Los Angeles, 4-0 Cardinals. The lone Dodger representative in the All-Star game, he was a bit of a surprise choice, and yesterday I asked him for his reaction. Well, you know, it's pretty hard to put in words. Uh... I know my wife and I, we high-five for about five minutes, uh, <laughs> laughing at one another. You know, we couldn't really believe it. As first of all, it was like a guy that was never on a ballot, uh, didn't even have a start position at the uh, beginning of the year, platooning with Lenny. And then all of a sudden, I found myself playing every day, and now I'm going to the 1992 All-Star game. Man, we'll have the All-Star game for you Tuesday night from San Diego at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Tuesday at 8 right here on CBS Sports the 63rd All-Star Game. Mike Sharperson needed a little extra effort to high five his wife. He was resting at home his right groin had his foot up and was just trying to get healthy but he said when he got the phone call he completely forgot that he had a groin injury started bouncing around the house high fiving with his wife. And so many of the Dodger players we've talked to the last couple of days have expressed their open happiness for Sharperson. It's nice to see somebody, as he said, a platoon player, get mm -hmm. a chance to go based on his fine performance in that role. And it's not often that uh, five years later, after a rather insignificant trade is made, that both players get to the All-Star game. Galarraga rips one down the left field line. That's a foul ball. Langford let off the inning, as you saw, with the fly ball to left on the first pitch. And now Galarraga's up there with a count of one and two. He bounced out his first time up. The trade to which we are referring was the Juan Guzman from Mike Sharperson trade back in 1987. A rather obscure trade. 
uh, made by the Dodgers to help them uh, fill in their infield. And the Toronto Blue Jays knew they would have to wait, getting Juan Guzman, had a problem with control throughout his career. And here, five years later, they're both in the All-Star game. That's neat. It's really such a minor trade at the time. Yeah. And now, two All-Stars. Galarraga goes down on the breaking ball. Two outs in the third. And that's the second strikeout today for Oral Hirschheiser. Number 27. Uh, As we discussed last week, Guzman seems to be the most deserving starting pitcher in the All-Star game for the American League, although we've been hearing some rumors the last couple of days that Jack McDowell of the Chicago White Sox might be the choice. Todd Zeal singled, starting the second. He scored the first of the three St. Louis runs last year. Cardinals scored three times last inning on three hits, two Dodger errors, and a pass ball. Hirschheiser just missed one and one. With that base hit his first time up, Todd Zeal is 14 for his last 25. to Hanson. He threw on the run. It's dug out of the dirt by Eric Karros. And the Cardinals go in order for the first time. After two and a half, it's 4-0 St. Louis. And we'll return to Dodger Stadium after this word from your local station. <clears throat> 27 years ago, he witnessed his brother. It's a good day to have a seat. Under one of the overhangs here at Dodger Stadium, as the drizzle continues to fall, Mike Sosha begins the Los Angeles third. The Cardinals lead four to nothing. Sosha up for the first time. He's batting 213, two homers, and 17 knocked in. Back to the screen. It's quickly 0 2. He's facing Mark Clark, who was allowed just one hit and one walk through two innings. Clark will face Sosha, then Hirschheiser. And Offerman. You can see Mark Clark gripping the ball in split finger fashion. Rarely see pitchers do that. He has an outstanding splitter. That was a fastball there. But Joe Coleman again, the pitching coach of the Cardinals, talking about the effectiveness of Clark's splitter in his last game last Sunday. Lifted to left. Bill Thompson drifts back, one out. About a nine, number 55, Oral Hershiser. That brings up Oral Hershiser, who is the leading hitter among Los Angeles pitchers with a 211 batting average. He's eight for 38. He's also the Dodger leader among pitchers and runs batted in with three. see pitchers who are as complete of players in the other parts of the game as Oral Hershiser is. Excellent fielder, excellent hitter. He has eight hits this year. Gold Glove winner in 1988. He has won just about everything you can win in baseball. Yeah. Most valuable player in postseason play in 1988, the playoffs and the World Series. Two balls and a strike. Him, uh, the Cy Young Award winner that year. He ended the season with 59 consecutive scoreless innings. Two and two now. Four nothing St. Louis. We're in the bottom of the third. One out and the base is empty. Zeal. On the move, makes the play. Talked about the grip of the split finger fastball with Mark Clark, and there it is again. Number 30, Jose Offerman. And that appeared to be the pitch that Hershiser got, the splitter.
Two outs and the base is empty. Clark waits as Jose Offman took his time coming to the plate. Had to buy a little extra time for Hershiser to gather himself. Offerman lined to third, starting the Dodger first. More scores from around the American League. The Angels finally snapped their 11 game losing streak last night. Pretty well hit to left, and Thompson was in shallow, but he's back to make the catch, and the Dodgers go in order in the third. After three at Dodger Stadium, it's the Cardinals four and the Dodgers nothing. <laughs> lead four to nothing. That young lady is obviously a Dodger fan. Not very happy at the moment. There's Don Baylor, the batting instructor of the Cardinals, and he was one of the candidates to become the manager of the Cardinals when St. Louis hired Joe Torrey two years ago. Don at that time was the batting instructor of the Milwaukee Brewers. And Torrey was an announcer with the California Angels. Can you imagine the security that Joe Torrey must have had to hire a guy who was thought highly enough to be considered as manager to hire him as your batting coach? And it's possible he could lose Don Baylor as his batting coach. Baylor's name has been at the top of the rumor list for the vacant managing job with the Texas Rangers. It's not vacant at the moment, and that's being occupied by Toby Hara, but he's been carrying the interim label, although we heard some scuttlebutt this morning that said it might be announced in the next day or two that Hara is going to be the Ranger manager for the go to the fourth. Joe Torrey hiring uh, Don Baylor, much akin to George Bush uh, asking Ross Perot as, if he'd be his running mate. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite that extreme, no. mind you. A lot of people thought Baylor would get that managing job in Milwaukee when Tom Treblehorn was fired. That's a fair ball. Again, down to the left field corner. Jordan in the second with a leadoff double. He's two for two today. He came into this one three for his last 32. He has a single and a double this afternoon. We talked about to how Brian Jordan needs to extend his arms in his last at bat that you can crowd him. Watch how he extends his arms on this breaking ball. That's full extension. So you can really tell that Jordan loves the ball out over the plate. He slaps it down the left field line and slips rounding first base, barely touching the bag. Seven hits now. And a ball outside to Tom Pagnazzi. He had the biggest hit of the ball game to this point. A two-run double down the left field line in the second. He scored the final run of the three-run second for St. Louis. back to the mound. Hershiser looked at third, did not have a play there, and he throws Pagnazzi out. Jordan at third with one out. Let's take a look at the game summary to this point. The Dodgers have committed two errors. That opened the door for the three runs in the second. Only one of those runs was unearned. Tom Pagnazzi the biggest hit. A two-run double in the second that scored Todd Zeal and Brian Jordan. They had started the inning with back-to-back -back singles. And on that double, Bagnazzi picked up RBI 27 and 28. Jones turned on one and pulled it well foul into the stands and right. Then a pass ball got Pagnazzi to third. Clark tried to squeeze him in and missed, but Sosha threw it over the head of Dave Hansen. An error charge to Sosa to go along with his pass ball in the inning, and Pagnazzi scored to make it four to nothing. That's where we stand now in the fourth. Infield again in for the Dodgers, and Jones lifts a pop-up. Could be a problem. Caught on the run by Davis. He had the only shot at it with Offerman playing in. Ordinarily, that would be the shortstop's ball, but Jose was in on the edge of the grass, and Jordan is still at third with two outs now. Oral Hershiser, the winner in game two of last Monday's doubleheader against Montreal. He gave up ten hits in that game. 
And his previous game, he gave up 13 hits with a no decision. But that was the first two games, the first two consecutive games in his career that he has given up back-to-back -back double digit hits. And that in itself is remarkable and an idea of what kind of career he has had. He was in with strike one to his opposite number, Mark Clark, who struck out his first time up. And he's on the verge of that again. 0 and 2 the count. laid off the breaking ball from Hershiser. Oral looking for his eighth win of the year. He's seven and six. Well, in the area of 3.3, there was some speculation a couple of days ago that he might be the Dodger All-Star selection. Fastball high, two and two. said if anybody deserves it from the Dodgers and you could argue that point Mike Sharperson is the most deserving Dodger All-Star and Clark strikes out for the second time Cardinals cannot capitalize on the leadoff double and in the middle of the fourth it's four nothing St. Louis to Rick LaCivita our director Joe Assetti delighted to have you with us on this Saturday afternoon it is brightening here at Dodger Stadium as we go to the bottom of the fourth very little rain at this time of year. The Dodgers have been rained out 15 times in their history since moving out here in 1958. And the first time against the St. Louis Cardinals back in 1967. Tom Goodwin won for three this year. 0 for 1 today. You reached on an error by Ozzie Smith. He squared a bunt and took a strike. Goodwin, Davis, and Strawberry in the fourth inning. At the conclusion of today's game, Tim McCarver and I will select the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in the player's name to the Special Olympics. And just joining us, Goodwin playing today for Brett Butler, who had to leave last night's game with a sore right shoulder. Butler due for some time off anyway. Fly ball to shallow right. Brian Jordan the catch. One out in the fourth. Butler, Jose Offren, and Eric Karros, the three Dodgers who played in every inning of those three double history since moving out here in 1958 and the first time against the St. Louis Cardinals back in 1967. Tom Goodwin won for three this year, 0 for 1 today. He reached on an error by Ozzie Smith. He squared a bunt and took a strike. Goodwin. Davis and Strawberry in the fourth inning. At the conclusion of today's game, Tim McCarver and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in the player's name to the Special Olympics. Just joining us, Goodwin playing today for Brett Butler, who had to leave last night's game with a sore right shoulder. Butler due for time off anyway. Fly ball to shallow right. Brian Jordan the catch. One out in the fourth. Butler, Jose Offren, and Eric Karros, the three Dodgers who played in every inning of those three double headers Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday against the Montreal Expos. Dodgers swept the Expos on Monday night. The Expos came back and swept the Dodgers Tuesday night. They split on Wednesday, and then Montreal goes up and wins two in a row from San Francisco. But both of those clubs had to be dragging. Eric Davis lines one into the gap in left center. It's a base hit. Langford over to the Los Angeles base hit. We mentioned Brett Butler not in action today. Coming into today's game, he had played in 233 consecutive games. And that is the second longest current streak in the majors behind Cal Ripken's 1,658. 
So if a guy like Butler says he's hurt, he's hurt. Mm -hmm. He's not looking for a way out, and that is not always the case in this day of long-term contracts. A lot of guys can't distinguish pain from injury. If you're injured, you can't play. If you have pain, you got to play. I mean, if you're a regular ball player and you go out and play 150 to 160 games a year, you're going to hurt half the time. Daryl Strawberry pulls one down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Jordan over to play it. Davis to third. Strawberry holds it first with a long single. And the Dodgers threaten in earnest for the first time this afternoon with runners at first and third and one out. Six, so you would anticipate it being long. Look how he curls the bat and watch this long swing, how far he has to go with the bat to get it in the hitting motion. Long and effective. Mm -hmm. Eric Carroll's the batter. One ball on Karros, who struck out swinging his first time up. That's the only strikeout registered by Mark Clark to this point. Fastball on the corner for strike one. Davis, the runner at third, Strawberry at first, the infield at double play depth with one out in the fourth and with St. Louis leading for nothing. in foul ground makes the play. That is a big second out of the inning for St. Louis. Well, a pitcher can entice younger players to go out of the strike zone in situations like that because most of the time the young players are anxious. Mark Clark is a young pitcher, but he's got a veteran catcher back there, and this ball in on the hands of Eric Karras. It ties him up, and the Cardinals get an important out. It'll be up to Dave. The base hit to right his first time up today, and he looks at strike one. Hanson, with his one for one today, is now 10 for his last 19. Out of play and left. And as you noted at the outset, it is a late arriving Los Angeles crowd. There were very few people here when this ball game began. And now we have a very nice crowd here at Dodger Stadium where the Dodgers have been averaging better than 35,000 fans per home date. The 0-2 pitch. Fastball under his chin. Not every pitch is designed to get you out. That pitch was not designed to get Hanson out, but it was designed to get him thinking about the inside so Clark can go back outside. I'd be surprised if he comes right back inside. That's back to his strength with the sinker. He did go to the sinker to get Hanson on the check swing. So Clark gets out of it with his second strikeout of the day. The Dodgers strand two after four, four nothing Cardinals. Dodgers and their fans nine through the first 20 games of the homestand following their three to one loss last night. Top of the order for St. Louis in the fifth. Milt Thompson singled in the first, reached on an error by Offerman in the second, and he's on again with a base hit past Offerman. Two for three is Milt Thompson. I think it's worth reiterating also that the Dodgers have not finished in last place in the National League since 1905. The Cardinals, on the other hand, similar success. They didn't finish last in the National League from 1918 to 1990. But then before Joe Torre took over, Whitey Herzog left, eventually landed with the California Angels as their general manager. And 
In 1990, the Cardinals finished last. Dazzy Smith single to right center in the first. He bounced to short in the second. Breaking ball high. Buggy Dent. The third base coach. Dave Collins is the first base coach. Put a pretty good team out in the field with Joe Torrey's coaching staff. Yeah. Don Baylor. The hitting coach. There's Dave Collins, the first base coach. Joe Coleman, the pitching coach. He was a fine major league coach. Tom moved to cover second. Everything going right for the Cardinals this afternoon. Smith is two for three. First and third, and nobody out in the St. Louis fifth. In order to prevent a ball going through a vacated position, you as the middle infielder, if you come up and then over, you prevent that. Offerman went right to the bag. That's what a lot of young shortstops do. If you come up, you don't give up the position. Naturally, you're playing closer. But he broke right for the bag, vacating the hole. Smith takes off. Socia's throw a one hopper, not in time. Offerman fielded it on the hop and tried to sweep the tag back to get Ozzie Smith. But it's a stolen base, and that's the 20th of the season for Ozzie. His 15th year now of 20 stolen bases or more. And that ties in with Lou Brock for the second longest such shoots. The infield now in and Langford takes ball two two and oh throw back to the mound almost got by Hirsch Eisen. Langford bounced into a 4-6-3 double play in the first. He was out on the fly ball to left in the third. Chance for the Cardinals to break this one wide open. Golf foul down to the photographer area, long first. Hirschheiser has now yielded eight hits. down to first. Carroll's looked Thompson back to third and that's the first out of the inning. Thompson and Smith not going there but with second and third and one out I think it's proper to send the runner regardless of the situation when you have the lead. A lot can happen. The worst that can happen is you end up with runners at first and third and two outs if the runner's thrown out at home. So while the runners didn't run with nobody out, look for them to run here mm -hmm. with one out. And Andres Galarraga, the batter. <laughs> In tight, ball one. Galarraga has hit just 116 this year with runners in scoring position. That is the lowest batting average with men in scoring position in the National League. That's why the Dodgers are pitching to him here. To right field. Not very deep. Strawberry catches it on the run. Thompson won't try it. He came about a third of the way down the line before returning to third. So they had second and third with nobody out. Now they're at second and third with two outs. Normally with first base open, you would tease the strike zone with Galarraga up there. You wouldn't throw him a good strike to hit. But because he has been so futile with runners in scoring position, they pitch to him and he continues to be unproductive. If you're the Cardinals there with Thompson, a decent runner at third, you're already ahead four to nothing. Why not take a chance with Bill Thompson? Wet outfield grass? I think you have the fat part of the lineup up. I think with Zeo hitting, with Jordan hitting, both have been swinging hot bats. I think it's uh, it would have been suicidal to try mm -hmm. to score on uh, on Daryl. He was too shallow, even though he did catch the ball below the waist. Mm -hmm. So he had a lot to do with the throw, but that throw would have nailed Thompson. Mm -hmm. Now they'll pitch around Todd Zeal, pitching coach Ron Paranowski visited the mound to talk about the situation. The 
steal 14 for his last 26 so they won't mess with him. They'll load the bases with two outs and work to Brian Jordan. Another term for a base hit in baseball is safeties, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Brian Jordan with two safeties today. That's exactly how many he had last year in the NFL. Two safeties, and that tied an NFL record. He was frequently a blitzing defensive back in that hard-charging scheme of Jerry Glanville. Really, a Jerry Glanville-type player would rip your head off if he had a chance to. Saw Brian Jordan's wife a couple of days ago. She's on the trip here in Los Angeles. Said, mm -hmm. you must be very happy that your husband's not playing football anymore. You don't have to worry about him getting injured. She said, oh, no. I'm a football fan. I like football better than <laughs> baseball. I wish he was still playing. So we know the pressure to give up football did not come from Brian's wife's hand. Ball one to Jordan. He had an infield hit and scored in the second. He doubled down the left field line and was stranded in the fourth. Double last inning came as the leadoff hitter, and they got Jordan to third with one out. So if the Cardinals failed to score here, this was this would be the second consecutive inning in which they had a chance to pad the lead and failed to do so. A great chance, in fact. Thompson at third, Smith at second, Zeal at first with two outs. We're in the fifth, four nothing, St. Louis. Size it took too much time. He's working from the windup with the bases loaded. Brian's wife did not pressure him to give up football. His mother did. His mother, Betty, lives in the Baltimore area. So she used to pray during every one of Brian's football games that nothing would happen to him physically. She reminded Brian of what happened to Bo Jackson. Jordan says that Jackson's experience definitely contributed to his decision to play baseball only. Two-two to Offerman. He shuffles off to Harris to end the inning. So the Cardinals blow another great chance to score, but halfway through the ball game, they are still on top, four to nothing. Before we ship a new Buick LeSabre in San Diego, 8 p.m. Tuesday night airtime for the All-Star game. Bottom third of the order for the Dodgers. As the fifth inning has rolled around, Lenny Harris the better. Mentioned Brian Jordan in connection with Bo Jackson the last inning. Bo Jackson talking about coming back mm -hmm. next year with an artificial hip. Unbelievable. He hopes to be working out again in September with the White Sox. Brian Jordan says since it is Bo Jackson, you can't rule it out. Mark Clark in with a strike, two and one on Harris, who Bounced into a 6-4-3 double play in the second. Mike Sosha on deck, then Oral Hershiser is due. You look at what Clark did in the minors last year, and you have to be a little bit surprised at his success this year. He was 5-5 five and five at AA Arkansas with an ERA of 4. Joe Torrey said he came to spring training with a broken foot. Smith came into this one without an error in 42 consecutive games, and that's his second error this afternoon. Number 14, Mike. And both plays rather routine, as routine as his name. The first he had to go to his left. This one he couldn't get the ball out of his glove. So two rare errors on Ozzie Smith. Mm. Joe Torrey waited a while before the game this morning and posting his lineup card and he said he wanted to check with Ozzie Smith. He's still just back from the chicken pox and Joe thought he might be a little bit tired with the early day game following the night game last night. 
But Ozzie said he was ready to go. He has committed two errors. The lead man on for the Dodgers in the fifth. Sosha, big swing and a foul straight back to the screen. Mike was out on the fly ball to left. His first time up. Four run lead. I don't uh, know what really the Cardinals are thinking about here. I mean, you've got Lenny Harris on first base, a left handed batter up. I don't think you should be holding the runner on in this situation. That four run lead cushion enough. And I don't think the Dodgers would run anyway. When you're behind by more than two or three runs in the middle innings, you have to be very, very careful and very, very sure. And Tommy Lasorda knows that if you're going to try to steal a base. You do open up the hole on the right side. Sosha, but and a good one. Clark does not have a play. Harris to second on the bunt base hit by Mike Sosha. Blueprint right here from Socia. Tom Peg or make that Tom. Yeah, right. Tom Pagnazzi, Todd Zeal converging. Pitcher Mike Mark Clark. And a bunt base hit and a beauty by Mike Socia. Hit number four for the Dodgers. And here's Todd Benzinger to bat for Oral Hershiser. For the Dodgers. Batting for Hershiser. Benzinger up with first and second and nobody out. We're in the fifth. The Cardinals lead four to nothing. Hershiser's day will end after five innings. He didn't sparkle, but he wasn't helped by those playing in the field with him. Benzinger has fared well as a pinch hitter. He's eight for 24 off the bench. A 333 pinch hit batting average with two runs driven in. Here from the left. play in left 0 and 2 on Benzinger Todd was seeing a lot of playing time when Davis and Strawberry were injured but now that they are back he's on the bench Two offering, called off the catcher Pagnazzi. Benzinger had a pinch hit single last night in the seventh inning. It's a valuable guy to have at a ball club. A switch hitter usually puts the ball in play. He can play the outfield or first base. Strikes out an off speed pitch from Mark Clark for the first out of the inning. And that is the third strikeout of the afternoon for the six foot five right hander. All three strikeouts have come in key situations. He got Eric Caros with a man on in the second inning and nobody out. He got Dave Hansen with two men on and two out in the fourth. And now with first and second and nobody out, he gets Ben Singer. Dodgers had first and third with one out last inning and failed to score. They had first and second and nobody out here in the fifth. Now one man out. Harris takes off the third. The throw to third, not in time. And with the throw heading to third from Tagnazzi, Sosha made an alert play and took off for second. He was not running with the pitch as Harris was, but they both move up a base. And I think the reason that Pagnazzi didn't go to second base was because he was blinded by the hitter. Lenny Harris just catching the Cardinals napping right here. But that's the type of reckless abandon we were talking about earlier. And the Dodgers showing that they're certainly not being passive here. You mentioned that Clark's strikeouts have come today when they really needed him, and he mm -hmm. has shown the ability this year to bear down when the opposition has met in scoring position. He's held opposing hitters to a 121 batting average this year with men in scoring position. The opposition to combine four for 33 against him. The 1-1, one, one, two Offerman is inside. Two balls and a strike on Jose, who is 0 for 2 today. He's up with one out. Lenny Harris, the runner at third, following his 10th stolen base of the year. And Sosha is at second. 
It was his third steal of the year. Chop to short. Smith goes to third. They have Sosha caught between second and third. And Jones tags him out. 6-5-4 the play on Sosha, but a run is on the board for Los Angeles. Oh, Mike is having a dreadful day. That is a terrible base running mistake. When you're the runner at second base, regardless of the runner on third, if the ball is hit at you or to your left, you go to third. If the ball's hit to your right, you've got to stay there. And Mike Sosha, an easy out, taking a runner out of scoring position. See, the ball was to his right. When the ball's to your right, if you're a runner on at second base, you stay. If the ball's to your left, you go. And Mike Sosha, an easy out, and a bad base running play by Mike. He's having a bad day. Mm. And it's so out of character. He is ordinarily such a heads-up player. But what a warrior. You're mm -hmm. right. And perhaps not the alibi for him, but perhaps all those doubleheaders and all these games the Dodgers have played are taking their toll. He has the toughest job of all to be out there day after day with all the equipment on. And as you mentioned, it's been an uncharacteristically hot and humid week in Los Angeles with the temperatures daily up around 90 and very high humidity. Even though Mike didn't start last night. Carlos Hernandez, the other catcher, the other Dodger catcher, was a starter. 4-1 St. Louis in the bottom of the fifth. Tom Goodwin, the batter, with a count of 0-1. Offerman at first with two outs. The ball low and away. Goodwin is 0-2 today. The run unearned as a result of the second error of the ball game by Ozzie Smith. RBI for Offerman is 16th of the season. He has stolen 10 bases this year and has been thrown out four times. Nice to see a healthy Bruce Priming barking out the balls and strikes today. A couple of weeks ago, he went in for a routine physical in New York, and he had 96% blockage of the arteries, and he is doing fine. It's amazing how quickly one can recover in this day and age from an angioplasty. Angioplasty, procedure. right. Just a couple of weeks, and he's back in action. He's lost a little weight. Says he has to stay away from liver and onions. <laughs> it's not that tough. <laughs> I'm sure his uh, umpiring crewmates would appreciate that too as they traveled around the National League. <laughs> Chop the second to Jones. And they get the hustling good one by a running step. The Dodgers are finally on the board and will return to new entertainment with the CBS hot summer season. Get outrageous with the comedy of Howie Mandel. From the creator of the A-Team, Lee Majors and Jeffrey Meek get fired up in the martial arts adventures of Raven. Lee Horsley leads a team of investigators through steamy crimes in bodies of evidence. Coming soon, the sizzling stories of co-ed life in Freshman Dorm. And the real-life drama of all-new 48 Hours and Street Stories. It's an all-new hot summer season on CBS. This is CBS. Menards can help you make do-it-yourself projects easier. Put air power to work for you with Campbell Hausfeld Air Tools and Compressor. This three-quarter horsepower air compressor is now just $169. And beautify your home with Olympic House and Trim Stain. Their modified oil formula penetrates and protects wood. Now just $8.97 a gallon. Save on all your do-it-yourself projects at Menards. Save big money at Menards. You may have seen a beer commercial this year with a bunch of cutout football players. That one commercial cost $1.8 million to make. The commercial you're watching now costs less than $5,000 to make, and we think even that's too much. It's a commercial for Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, the beer that invites you to say PB Army ASAP when you want a good beer at a good price, because that's really all there is to it. Good beer at a good price. So if that's what you want, say PB Army ASAP, and that's what you'll get. Thanks. In our service department, your car is king. Bodies are mended, 
engines maintained, brakes, shocks, and tires are inspected, and there are no long waits. We loan you a car to use while we repair yours. That's red carpet service from Krieger's in Muscatine. The red carpet car people. Three run late for the Cardinals as we go to the sixth, and there's a new man at the center of the diamond. For Los Angeles, he's 31-year-old right-hander Tim Cruz. Oh, and one on the year. He recently started a game back on July 7th, one of those doubleheader games. And it was his only start of the year and only his third major league start. We mentioned Greg Brock, big left-handed first baseman, formerly with the Milwaukee Brewers. And that was uh, the person for whom Tim was traded. And he has done a yeoman job for the Dodgers over the years. The trade was before Greg Brock. Tom Pagnozzi greets Tim Cruz. Pagnozzi belted a two-run double into the left field corner his first time up. Bounced back to the mound against Hershiser in the fourth. First pitch from Cruz is a strike. Cruz is from Tampa. He's six feet, 195 pounds. high along the line and right. Strawberry the catch, one out. Let's take you around the horn now in the American League. One of the notable omissions from the All-Star game in the American League is Cecil Fielder, who is leading the majors and runs batted in, but Travis Fryman will be the Tiger representative. He's on a pace for 150 RBIs and not on the All-Star team. Strange. People talked a month or two ago about the slow start of Cecil Fielder. We haven't heard much of that lately. No. Two out. Another notable omission from the American League All-Star squad, Dave Winfield, among the league leaders in several offensive categories, and it would have been a return home to San Diego where his career began. It just seems normal to me to expand the rosters, and then you uh, don't have any omissions like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the rosters, the All-Star rosters, were set before the 1969 season, there were only 20 teams in the major leagues. Now there are 26. So it would seem normal uh, to expand the rosters, but often baseball uh, and the powers that be do not uh, do normal things. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Clark struck out twice. The dilemma faced by Tom Kelly, the American League manager and league president, Dr. Bobby Brown, came in the pairs of outfielders from the same team in the American League. You had Joe Carter and Dave Winfield at Toronto, Ruben Sierra and Juan Gonzalez at Texas. They can only take one each. The throw was off the bag, but Carroll's came off to get it. Cruz to Carroll's to get Clark and end the inning. After five and a half, 4-1 St. Louis. It's not the highest volume production line in the world, but look what we turn out. Clear Ultra, with tons of white hot action. Marble foil stamping, even a super glossy UV coating. So now that you know how much quality goes into Fleer Ultra, you'll agree, you can't buy a better baseball card. Six wheels, a dish on top, and a Winnebago we go. Friends since the second grade, products of Altoona, PA. That's Jack, the Butch Cassie of the Poconos. That's me, Andy, now Mr. L.A. The bowl to go where no man has gone before. That's Jack's motto. I say if you can't get there by car, you have no reason being there. Well, here's the new faces and places you don't see in L.A. But I still say if you got a cold old mill and a view that fits on a 12-inch screen, it doesn't get any better than this. Kellogg's Court Flakes presents your basketball stars for the Olympic Games. Center, David Robinson. He... Dave, wrong jacket. <laughs> David Robinson. No, not that jacket. This jacket featuring you, Malone, Stockton, Bird, and Mullen. Just in time for you to get into the action of this basketball first. <laughs> Available from Kellogg's Court Flakes and for a mere two proofs and $4.99. Now that's proper attire. The commemorative Kellogg's 1992 U.S. Olympic jacket from Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Dave, now, what about those pants? Bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, Chris. Well, Joey, I'm thinking fastball here. There it is, deep to right. And it's gone! The game is over! That's the second of the game, and the winning streak goes to five! Now let's go down to the field. <laughs> Thanks, Joey and Chris. 
It's amazing what you can do with your imagination. Here's for the National Education Association. 4-1 St. Louis as we go to the bottom of the sixth there at Dodger Stadium. We noted a moment ago on our tour of the American League that Bobby Valentine became the second managerial casualty in Major League Baseball this season. Tom Runnels of Montreal the first. They went a long time with Bobby Valentine without really ever winning anything. They didn't win a division title. But some of the players including Jeff Houston quoted this week as saying they thought Bobby Valentine was doing his best managing job this year. Hmm. Davis rattled the mask of Tom Pagnazzi on the first pitch of the Dodger sixth. The Texas Rangers entering today's play five and a half games behind the Minnesota Twins are six games over 500 in the American League West so they still have a, a very very good shot at the title if uh, Oakland and Minnesota slows down and the White Sox don't keep their surge going. Bobby Valentine's point was boy Minnesota goes 15 and three we drop a few games back as you might expect with the mm -hmm. first place club going 15 and three and oh. point. great oh. play by Ooh. Zeal. He handled a one hop smash and threw Davis out. In a game that has featured some very sloppy fielding on both sides, that is without argument the play of the day. Sparkling play by Todd Zeal. You folks at home can be the third baseman and realize why they call it the reaction corner. Hot corner, whatever you want to call it. That is a terrific play by Todd Zeal. Only four players have caught 100 games during a season and played third base over 100 games. Duke Farrell, Johnny Bench, and Joe Torrey, and now Todd Zeal. And Joe Torrey was well aware of what he was asking Zeal to do when he made the transition from catcher to third base, and as you just saw, he's made the transition very nicely. Joe did it and was the MVP back in 1971. The Cardinals batting 363. He entrenched himself in uh, the big leagues as a catcher. He'd only caught for one and a half years. And uh, making that move was not as drastic as it was for a guy like Joe Torrey or Johnny Bench, who did it later on in their careers. In the air and left center. Milt Thompson makes the catch two down in the sixth 4 one St. Louis we continue our tour of the American League one guy who made a late charge to try to get into the all-star game George Bell since moving to the cleanup spot on June 6 when Gene Lamont moved each of his three hitters in a row Robin Ventura Frank Thomas and George Bell up one spot on the batting order that combination has been clicking most notably Bell Well, the one thing that uh, everybody agrees on with George Bell is that he is a professional hitter. That might be the two best words that you can say about anybody who is a good big league hitter. It's also a fine arguer. He got thrown out for oh, yeah. the third time mm -hmm. this year earlier in the week. Cal Ripken, again the leading vote getter among all players in Major League Baseball in the 1992 All-Star Ballot from Jack Murphy Stadium. Now that we've been here in Southern California for a few days, can we call it the Murph as they do in San yeah, Diego? Sure. The Murph. <laughs> Eric Karros takes a strike at the knees, two and two. He's 0 for 2 today. Should have said sure, dude. <laughs> a gnarly swing, and it was fouled away. Still two and two on Karros. Have to stay contemporary. Yes, we do. Yes. I was wondering why I saw you watching Wayne's World again last night in the hotel. <laughs> and the count is full. Clark has only walked one. That was Strawberry back in the second. Joe Torrey said, with the exception of one start two weeks ago against the Mets. Clark has been getting progressively better with each start throughout this season and he's continuing that trend again today. That's the second free pass he has issued. He uh, should be working on a shutout. The one run was mm -hmm. on her. That's right. And we talked earlier uh, in our opening 
as you look at Joe Torre at 26 over 17 games now. But the key point here is the last time any team allowed so few runs over 16 games was back in 1988. The Dodgers did it, and that was during Oral Hershiser's 59 consecutive scoreless inning streak. That was 23 runs over 16 games for the Dodgers in September of 88. Dave Hansen single to right in the second. He struck out looking in the fourth. Out of play in left one and one. The fewest runs allowed 16 straight games in a season. The St. Louis Cardinals and there it is 25. That is the best in this century. Hmm. Amazing. Well, the pitching staff, as we said, was thought to be the question mark of this St. Louis team before the season started. Joe Coleman, the pitching coach, said, we have a lot of faith in our minor league people, and they told us that they thought guys like Osborne and Clark and Perez were ready to pitch against them. What makes it all the more remarkable is in 1968, that was the phenomenal year of Bob Gibson when he had a 1.12 ERA. The Cardinals led the majors in shutouts with 30 that year. Hmm. 30 shutouts. Gibson had 13. The ball low, and all of a sudden, Clark's control has deserted him. Now we'll bring the tying run to the plate with two outs in the sixth, and that has pitching coach Joe Coleman on the phone to the bullpen for the first time today. It also has Joe Coleman on the way to the mound as they stir out in right field. Mike Perez is going to start throwing. Anytime a young pitching staff fares as well as this one has, you have to give credit to the pitching coach. Joe Coleman is obviously doing nice things with these fellows. Mm -hmm. Joe Coleman was the bullpen coach of the California Angels when Joe Torrey was an announcer. Joe thought enough of Joe to ask him to be his pitching coach. And right there seated, Red Shandies. Check those shades. We talked about oh, being contemporary goodness. contemporary <laughs> earlier. Now there's a cool dude right there, Red Shandies. In his 51st year in professional baseball, his 48th consecutive year, in a major league uniform as a player, manager, and coach, and keeping right up with the fashion, not only wearing those glasses, but the cardinal colored glasses. Yeah. Oh, Rojo. Played for Red. He was the cardinal manager for 12 years, from 65 through 76. And I was very surprised when Red asked me if I wanted to go surfing after the game today when I saw him in the clubhouse. But now I'm not as surprised as I was then. Sure, dude. Party on Red. <laughs> Two outs and two men on. One and all the count on Lenny Harris. That's chopped the second. A room service bounce to Jones, and that ends the inning. Six runners stranded by the Dodgers. <laughs> sure. Unsure. Sure. Unsure. When dryness really counts, be sure to be dry. Sure Solid has the most effective wetness fighting ingredient you can buy. For dryness, no one can beat. So you're either sure or unsure. Sure. Unsure. Be sure to be dry. This is the end of Head & Shoulders as you now know it. It's better. Now it gets to 10 times more of the places dandruff starts to help prevent flakes. New head and shoulders. This could be the end of flakes. Trouble with heartburn? Well, you could change your diet. Or change your job. Maybe change your lifestyle. Or better still, reach for Rolaids. It works fast to absorb excess stomach. With Rolaids, Rolaids spells relief. 
her I want a new car. We're not new car kind of people. A Toyota Corolla with all kinds of fancy options. We're not fancy options kind of people. But now we can save big on air conditioning, AM, FM, stereo cassette, power windows and door locks, the whole shebang. Save up to $1,100 on the Toyota Corolla LE Extra Value Package. Guess we're fancy options kind of people now. Change is good. I love what you do for me, Toyota! CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. Today's game is brought to you by Toyota, reminding you to always buckle up. Do it for those who love you. Roll Aids. Roll Aids spells 100% relief. And by new improved head and shoulders, now it works even better to prevent flakes. After six, it's 4-1 St. Louis, and it's time for another all-star memory. 1984, struck out the side. His name was quite good. It was really like a dream come true. And then to go back out that next inning, you still kind of caught up in the motion and everything from the first inning because the fans don't stand up clapping. Then it being your first year and the first time appearance in the All-Star game, you get three strikeouts. Is, uh, really was amazing. The 63rd All-Star game comes your way Tuesday night from San Diego at 8 Eastern time. We hope you'll be with us. We'll be joined in San Diego by our colleagues Pat O'Brien and Jim Cott. A lot of interesting features to come your way on our telecast on Tuesday, including a camera inside first base. Milt Thompson, the batter, as we go to the seventh. He's been on base three times. He's two for three with two singles, and he reached on an error by the Los Angeles shortstop, Jose Offerman. Top of the order against Tim Cruz, Thompson, Smith, and Lankford. Cruz has pitched one perfect inning of relief. Looking forward to base cam. See what kind of a... There's 90 feet away. Amazing what they're doing with technology it today. Is. We could see 90 feet with a camera. <laughs> and it's manned by the smallest cameraman in the history oh. of baseball television. Mm -hmm. Who might that be? No one. It's unmanned. <laughs> <laughs> be a little uncomfortable in that first base bag. We're trying to be accurate. <laughs> Either that or we could bury somebody up to their neck, I suppose, yeah, under first base. It's the size of a lipstick, right? Mm -hmm. Goes right in the bag, in the side of the bag that faces second base. A little visual aid would be helpful, Mr. McCarvin. Okay, I'm rushing to get one. That would be about right there. Is that right? I've never even seen the thing. How am I going to give a visual aid? I, I would imagine it's going to be right there. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Lenny Harris throws Thompson out. We're going to be chatting with Willie Mays, the honorary captain of the National League, during the game on Tuesday night. We'll also have microphones on each manager, Bobby Cox of the National League, Tom Kelly of the American League. We'll hear from Pat O'Brien in the bullpen during the game. Lots of fun features to look forward to in addition to the ball game, which, as always, takes center stage Tuesday night at his 20th stolen base of the year. He's also committed two errors. There must be something about Dodger Stadium. Ozzie's last two error game was in this ballpark this year, April 27. That's four errors in this park this year. And only two in all the other parks in the National League. Right. Combined. One and two on the Wizard. One St. Louis at the top of the seventh. One out. The bases are clear. And Smith is called out on strikes. Two outs in the seventh. That's the first strikeout for Cruz, who has retired all five Cardinal batters he has faced today. Ray and Ray Lankford strides to the plate. He's 0 for 3. Everybody thinks uh, Southern California is the uh, bastion of power as far as Major League Baseball players are concerned, and certainly a lot do come from Southern California, but thinking of Gooden uh, and the spot we showed uh, about all-star memories, Tim Cruz from Tampa, Fred McGriff from Tampa, Wade Boggs from Tampa, two starters in the all-star game, but that Tampa area, a, uh, another fertile area for Major League players. Jose and Langford pacing the Cardinal outfield that has combined to have the 
highest collective batting average of any outfield in the National League this year. They are hitting 283 collectively, and there's Jose. It's his right thumb that he injured in the first game of this series on Thursday night, sliding head first into the second base bag. Up and in on Langford, two balls and two strikes. Drew's a quick worker. Watches Langford sink it into right. Langford one for four. That is the ninth St. Louis hit and the first allowed by Cruz. Andres Galarraga. We're at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles for game three of a four game series between the Dodgers and the St. Louis Cardinals. The series tied at one win apiece. Sean McDonough and Tim McCarver happy to have you with us. The Cardinals happy to have a three run lead. They haven't scored since the second. They scored once in the first. Three times in the second. The Dodger run came in the fifth. Gallera Seventh inning stretch. 4-1 St. Louis. Toyota proudly presents all around champions. Jim Abbott is special. Not because he overcame his own disabilities, but because he coaches disabled youngsters to realize they're just kids. By playing ball with them, they learn to set goals, accomplish deeds, and have fun along the way. In return, their smiles are what make Jim Abbott feel truly special. Toyota is pleased to support Jim by donating $1,000 to Challenger Division Baseball. It's hard to describe when you hold your child for the very first time. You feel that little hand. You hear that little cry. You realize you're responsible for someone else. It changes your priorities. It even changes what you drive. The 1992 Toyota Previa, along with standard driver's side airbag and optional anti-lock brakes. It's the only van to meet all passenger car, federal motor vehicle safety standards. Toyota Previa. Changes everything. truck you want, order all your moving accessories, and arrange for a convenient pickup and drop-off at any of our 5,000 locations nationwide. Does Route 60 run through Phoenix? Thanks. Oh, and it's a 24-hour number, so if you have any other questions along the way, feel free to call. Ryder, we're there when you need us. Jim Hunter to the right of your screen and to the left, Don Drysdale doing our CBS radio game this afternoon. Don Drysdale, we mentioned Oral Hershiser with 59 consecutive scoreless innings back in 1989. Well, it was Don Drysdale's record that he broke. Don had 58 back in 68. We should note that that was not Jim Catfish Hunter. No. Our very no. own Jim Hunter of CBS. And that was Norman Bayer in the stylish shirt in the middle there. Producer. Mike Sosha, the batter against Mark Clark. Allowed only four hits through six innings. The Dodger offensive woes continue. Sosha had the last hit for the Dodgers, a bunt base hit in the fifth inning. All four of the Los Angeles hit single and gets it back in. The Dodgers have had a base runner in every inning, at least one in every inning, except the third. Pitcher Cruz, the next scheduled hitter, but Mitch Webster is at the plate to bat for him. Cruz pitch two, shutout innings. Webster a switch hitter, batting 238 overall. Jay Howell will be the new pitcher. When we go to the top of the eighth, we're in the bottom of the seventh, St. Louis four, Los Angeles one. batting from his weaker side of the plate in 1992. He's hitting only 222 left-handed. But he has been an excellent pinch hitter. Six for 14 
in a pinch hitting capacity, including a pinch hit homer and seven runs batted in. That's well hit toward the gap in right center field. Jordan can't get it. Sosha on his way to third. First and third and nobody out for Los Angeles in the seventh inning. To right center field, I think Webster in a normal game, a tie game or one run game, would probably try to stretch this into a double. But with the Dodgers trailing by three, it's better to be safe. Sosia chugging into third, and the Dodgers with a scoring opportunity once again here in the seventh. They've had as many good chances as the Cardinals to score runs, but St. Louis did a better job early in the ball game of taking advantage of its opportunities and Joe Torre is going to make a pitching change. So another solid outing for Mark Clark. The tying run is coming to the plate for the Dodgers when we come back. Last year's game MVP, Cal Ripken, bash brother Mark McGuire, Seattle slugger Ken Griffey Jr., World Series hero Kirby Puckett, the battle of the best, the all-star game. This is how it starts. When you first start your engine, when most oil is still down in the pan, when metal-to-metal -metal contact is at its worst, this is how engine wear starts. This is how you can help stop it. With new STP engine treatment, it actually bonds to your internal engine parts. Protect engine treatment. Folks in these parts think Tom Lawton is the best thing to ever turn a wrench. But back east, They'll put their money down on the guys at McClellan's. It seems in every town there's always one place that does a little bit better job fixing your car. And it seems the things they all have in common are great mechanics, great service, and Napa parts. Look for the sign of quality car repair. Napa. Trouble with heartburn? Well, you could change your diet. Or change your job? Maybe change your lifestyle. Or better still, reach for Rolaids. It works fast to absorb excess stomach acid and bring 100% relief to millions. So maybe you can't change your life, but you can get relief with Rolaids. Rolaids spells relief. This relief break is sponsored by Rolaids. 19 innings, but that streak is in jeopardy as he leaves behind him runners at first and third in the Los Angeles seventh, and nobody out. Chris Carpenter, the new hurler for St. Louis. Chris from Gainesville, Georgia. He attended the University of Georgia. He was a punter on the football team. He was drafted as the 14th player selected for the Cardinals back in 1987. He throws a good split finger fastball right over the top. He was 10 and 4 last year, 3 and 2 this year. And during this pitching change, we'll check the standings for the Rolaids relievers of the year. In the American League, it's a runaway. Eckersley has still not blown a save. That's 33 in a row dating back to last year. And all four of those names you see on the screen will be in the All-Star game, rewarded for their fine performances in this the first half of 1992. Norm Charlton with a slim lead over Lee Smith. And you made the save leader in the National League. Excuse me, Sean, you may not uh, have to wait too long to see Lee Smith. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if the Cardinals take a lead into the ninth inning, you'll be seeing Lee this afternoon. The Dodgers have been lacking the big hit all year. The Los Angeles run to this point when he reached on a fielder's choice in the fifth. He's 0 for 3. First and third of nobody out. The infield at double play depth as Offerman missed the first pitch thrown by Carpenter. The runner at third is Mike Sosha. And at first, Mitch Webster. He's held on by Galarraga. Webster, a decent base runner. He has stolen seven bases. He's only been caught once. Carpenter on the inside part of the plate. And he has jumped ahead of Offerman 0-2. Offerman at the plate. Tom Goodwin is on deck. Low and inside. 
talked about this young pitching staff of St. Louis and certainly Carpenter is not an old man. He turned 27 on April 5th. 6 1, 185 pounds. His 1 2 pitch. He struck him out with a pitch around the knees. That's the first out of the inning. The fourth strikeout for St. Louis pitching today. Mark Clark and his three strikeouts, all important strikeouts, and Chris Carpenter comes in and gets an important strikeout here in the set. Prefer the double play, naturally. When you have runners on at first and third and nobody out, for the most part, you've given up that run at third base, especially with the three-run lead. Tom Goodwin was the scheduled batter, but the Dodgers all-star, Mike Sharperson, has moved in the on-deck circle. He's still bothered by that sore right groin, and that's why he did not start today's game. And he'll be followed by Eric Davis. Sharperson's all-star numbers, a 328 batting average. Two homers, 27 runs batted in, and he's fared well as a pinch hitter. 5-4-18. Just like his predecessor Clark, Carpenter has been very tough. When the opponents have had runners in scoring position, they've hit only 145 against Chris Carpenter. And something has to give as this year Mike Sharperson is at 339 with men in scoring position. Webster back to first. Well, Carpenter wants a ground ball out of Sharperson. If he hits it to anybody in the infield, regardless of the speed of the ball hit, it'll probably be a double play. Sharp. Out of play. Into the crowd of 34,216 today at Dodger Stadium. And just as the crowd was late arriving, the blip is a little bit late in arriving because of the weather. Inside. Two and one on Sharperson. One out, first and third for Los Angeles in the seventh. St. Louis leads four to one. Cardinals had chances to put the Dodgers away early, well before the Goodyear blimp arrived. That's a bullet foul. Sharperson turned on it and smoked it on a hop into the stands and left. Sharp person becomes a sharp shooter right here with that bullet down the left field line. He fought off a tough slider from Carpenter. There is no truth to the report that Sharp. <laughs> Mike Sharperson. Another one away. Still two and two. Carpenter out of the University of Georgia. That's the same school that produced Dave Fleming. It was another tough omission from the American League All-Star team for Tom Kelly. Ten and three for the Seattle Mariners, and you can't make the All-Star team. Boy, that was tough. American League with only one left-hander, Mark Langston, the only left-hander on the staff. Martinez and Ken Griffey Jr. will represent Seattle. They got a perfect double play ball. Smith stepped on the bag and doubled up Sharperson. And the Dodgers do it again. They have a great chance to score and fail to do so after 7 4 1 St. Louis.
The Los Angeles Dodgers committed two costly errors. Both of them came in the second inning. That opened the door for three plenty of chances to add to their run total. The Dodgers have been particularly anemic with runners in scoring position. The new pitcher for Los Angeles, the third of the day for the Dodgers, is Jay Howell. Jay's 18th start, no record at one point. Well, he does have a record. He's 0-0, mm -hmm. oh and 0-0, oh. <laughs> so that's a record. So Jay Howell, the third pitcher for the Dodgers, is in there. And when you see Jay Howell, you think about uh, the 1988 playoffs against oh, the New York Mets when Neal. he was found Neal. with uh, pine tar in his glove. Foreign substance, which I've always considered a very strange term since it's not imported. And he was suspended by then National League President uh, Bart Giamatti for two days, and it was eventually cut to one day. Mm. A sticky situation indeed. Mm -hmm. Eighth inning, 4-1 St. Louis. And Todd Zeal takes a the ball. There's a new center fielder in the ball game as well, Mitch Webster, who came up as for another outstanding performance by the Cardinals pitching staff today, Mark Clark. He worked six innings plus two batters in the seventh. He allowed one unearned run. Six hits, he walked three and struck out three. There's a base hit just past the lunge of Jose Offerman. Zeal continues to sizzle. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the expressed written consent Ryan of Major League Baseball. Jordan, right field. We particularly suggest that you pay attention to that note today because our new boss Rick Gentile senior vice president in charge of sports production at CBS Sports is here today and he keeps hmm. track of such things. We welcome Rick it's the first time we've had him one of our games in his new capacity and we look forward to being with all of our CBS friends in San Diego we'll head down right after the ball game for the Midsummer Classic Tuesday night. Brian Jordan has singled and doubled and scored a run. Big pitch for a ball. It's one ball and one strike. That that's all Jay Howe was remembered for because he has had 16 saves for the Dodgers over the last two years. He set a Dodger record with 28 saves back in 1989, the year after that incident. Little lob off first, caught by Carroll for the first out of the inning. We're in the eighth, and St. Louis leads four to one. One out and a runner at first. Jordan now two for four. Tom Pagnazzi had the biggest hit of the ball game, a two-run double in the second. He also scored in that inning. See that walk to home plate by Pagnazzi? That was a day game after a night game walk by a catcher, if I ever saw one. Mm -hmm. That's a little slower. The arm's a little slower. Pagnazzi catching last night's game and here again today. And he'll be in San Diego. Tuesday night, we'll see some of the best arms among catchers in baseball. See this walk? Now, this is a day game after a night game walk by a catcher to the plate. <laughs> always tell those. The runner goes. As Pagnazzi fouled it away. Zeal was off with the pitch. And you notice uh, the first time up, Pagnazzi pulling a ball down the third baseline. And then he grounded back to the pitcher, and then he flied out to right field. And then he hit that ball to the right side. That, and really, regardless of your age, it becomes more difficult to, to stay strong. Deal runs again. Pagnazzi lined it to short. And it's an easy double play. Offerman elected not to throw across the diamond. Double play, six unassisted. That ends the inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth at Chavez Ravine, 4 1 Cardinals. Spending a lot of time this afternoon talking about those you will see Tuesday night in the All-Star game. Here are some of the notable omissions from the National League All-Star roster. 
Several Expos who didn't make it could make an argument, not just to Shields and Hill, but also Marquise Grissom. Andre Dawson having an outstanding year for the Cubs. And Eddie Murray. Tied for second place with Darren Dalton behind Gary Sheffield. Gary Sheffield, the fine third baseman with the Padres, will make it to the All-Star team. For the first time, Sheffield has driven in 60 runs this year, two more than Murray and Dalton. Time running out of the Dodgers here this afternoon. Eric Davis, single to center in the fourth, has only hit in three trips. Daryl Strawberry and Eric Carroll to follow against reliever Chris Carpenter. Tom Bernanski hit a grand slam for the Red Sox, and Mo Vaughn hit a three-run home. California break up the Angels. Their second straight win after 11 consecutive losses, and Dennis Eckersley had his 30th save in Oakland's win at Toronto. And we begin with the man most expect will be the starter for the National League Tuesday night for the second straight year, Tom Glavin. Leads the National League in shutouts, complete games, wins, and he will be fresh, and one would assume that he would have to be the starter mm -hmm. for the National League. Terrible. Daryl Strawberry, the batter. He has walked, singled, and fly to left. One out, and the base is empty in the eighth. 4-1 St. Louis. Last ball at the belt, strike one. The only other pitcher you could make an argument for is the Cardinals, Bob Tewksbury. Mm -hmm. Strawberry down to Galarraga on the Carpenter. 3-1 the play, two outs in the eighth. You mentioned that Greg Swindell was not selected to the team, and he was very disappointed, and you can understand why. A lot of things uh, added to his disappointment. I mean, it's his first time in the National League. Coming over an eight and two record, a 2.94, an excellent ERA, and look at the walks. Only 24 walks in 128 and two-thirds innings. Cincinnati being in first place, of course. Tom Kelly, a little myth that the Cleveland Indians uh, with three representatives. Arrows the batter. One and one the count. Two outs on the bases empty in the eighth. It's 4 1 St. Louis. Cleveland Indians are a nice story. That's a bullet foul into the stands and left. They have a very young nucleus with Jim Tomey becoming healthy now. They have what they think will be their infield of the future completely in place. With Tomey at third, Mark Lewis at short, Carlos Baerga an all star at second. Sandy Alomar Jr., an all-star behind the plate, and Reggie Jefferson now healthy at first base. Check swing and a tapper back to the screen. Kenny Lofton, the fine young outfielder. Mm. Charles Nagy, an all-star selection. Right-handed pitcher. In that infield, Jim Tomey, 21 years old. Lewis, 22 years old. Baerga and Jefferson, each 23. Alomar is 25. Future is indeed bright, perhaps. They've been saying that for a long time in Cleveland. Langford the catch. One, two, three, go the Dodgers in the eighth, and we head to the ninth with the Cardinals on top, four to one. Six wheels, a dish on top, two weeks, and a Winnebago we go. Friends since the second grade. Products of Altoona, PA. That's me, Jack, the Butch Cassidy of the Poconos. Big boots, big dog, big ideas. That's Andy, Mr. L.A. now. Mr. Poolside in Ray-Ban shades. You can't see America by plane, I say. Five dollars. You gotta go out and feel the dirt. So like Lewis and Clark, Stanley and Livingston, Thelma and Louise, we took off for the great outdoors. It doesn't get any better than this, was Andy's refrain. Wide open spaces, new friends and faces. A sunset you won't find in L.A. And my thanks to a ranger named Beverly, who assured us bears don't like beer. Brutus, go! But to Andy, survival here is the same as Ella. It doesn't get any better than this. 
Today, Tetrich Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, commission savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. Do you hunger for dirt and rocks? Do you salivate at the mere sight of a steep mountain trail? Are you getting enough roughage? 1992 Toyota 4x4 SR5 V6. For those who crave adventure, it's the ultimate feast. Bon appetit. Led by Eric Davis and Daryl Strawberry, the Dodgers had high hopes for this 1992 season. They trail four to one as we go to the ninth this afternoon. One year ago today, the Dodgers were in first place in the National League West by five games over Cincinnati. They came into action today in the last place in the West, 14 games behind the Reds. And the way they're playing, Tim, with very little hope for making the kind of near miracle comeback it would take to win this division. Dodgers have won 21 divisions or pennants. One out is Harris, retired. Seven and a half game deficit and won a pennant or a division mm -hmm. in their history. 21 divisions or titles and never coming back from more than seven and a half out. And if they lose this, uh, they'll be 14 and a half out behind the Cincinnati Reds. For the Cardinals, batting for Carpenter. Rex Hudler is batting for Chris Carpenter. Hudler. Another one of the many Cardinals who has spent time on the disabled list this year. He's only been to the plate 57 times in all with 12 hits. And as you saw, just one for 10 as a pinch hitter, but that was a pinch hit home run. And when we go to the bottom of the ninth, Lee Smith will come on to protect the lead. Howell misses high. Hudler will be followed by Milt Thompson. Cardinals have not scored since the second. Off the end of the bat, one and two. If Lee Smith comes in and completes the game, of course, he'll get credit for the save. But the key pitcher in this game was Chris Carpenter, who came in with runners at first and third. Nobody out. And the Cardinals leading by, and I think that's somehow unfair. Two innings of work for Chris. He faced five batters. He recorded six outs and six key outs coming into a jam like he did. And all he'll get is a no decision. So obviously there are no decisions that are more important than some no decisions. And today is one of them. Well, in some box scores, he'll get a hold. Yeah. He held the lead. Webster holds the ball for the second out. But it's not an official no. stat as far no, as is baseball is concerned, and I think that's a bit unfair. Something's got to be done for middle relievers to who turn in a good job like Chris did today for them to get credit for it. If for no other reason than financially it gives them sure. something to compare themselves to when they go in to negotiate contracts or go into arbitration. More ammunition. Mm -hmm. Thompson acts at the first pitch. He fouled it away. Two outs in the top of the ninth. In the bottom of the ninth, against Lee Smith, the Dodgers have Dave Hansen, Lenny Harris, and Mike Sosha scheduled to hit. Slowly down the line. Could be a tough play. Howell couldn't get it. And Milt Thompson has his third hit of the afternoon. Oh. Milt Thompson both appear to be all right Thompson however appears to have gotten the worst of the deal watch how tries to dive and now he comes down as Thompson rolls over Jay coming down right on the right knee of Milt Thompson that could be something that doesn't show up in today's game but tomorrow might be very very sore there it is there pounding that right knee into the ground. Fortunately, it wasn't turned to where it could be twisted. It looked like the knee w went straight into the ground. 
And uh, for that, I think Milt should be thankful. The ball on Ozzie Smith, who was two for four today with a couple of singles. He struck out his last time up. A lot of rarities today. Two errors committed by Smith, and the whiff is also unusual for Ozzie. Just the 14th time he has fanned this year. He's been up 263 times. That's a fair ball. Eric Carroll sends the inning. On to the bottom of the ninth in Los Angeles. It's 4-1 St. Louis. Iron Mike on Rust. I hate Rust. Iron Mike on top. Sports Center is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Lights and by Ecto. Last call for the Dodgers as they get ready to bat in the ninth, trailing four to one. It was a most eventful week in Major League Baseball and it started with the commissioner's decision that in the best interest of baseball, he had ordered realignment of the National League. The Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals will move to the Western Division, the West Division, and Atlanta and Cincinnati head east. Of course, the Cubs are protesting in court. I think for the sake of illustration, consider the commissioner of baseball as a chiropractor, and he has this body of baseball uh, lying before him with 28 joints in, uh, down the vertebra, four out of place. Give it one little snap, and only three pop back into place. The CC <laughs> joints out of line. <laughs> Malpractice. <laughs> Looking like a man who has endured that pain in the past. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> the Cubs more of a pain in Faye Vincent's neck than a pain in the back at the moment. And Lee Smith hoping to be a thorn in the side of the Dodgers as we go to the bottom of the ninth. He's trying to bring up his league leading 23rd save. The last time uh, we saw the big right-hander from Jamestown, Louisiana, 6'6", 245. He was throwing a lot of breaking balls, a lot of sliders. And uh, the next day in the paper, this was a couple of weeks ago, he had complained about tenderness in his right shoulder. So we will see today how Lee Smith goes at the Dodgers hitters. Will it be with fastballs or breaking balls? Another change for the Cardinals. Bernard Gilkey has entered the ball game in left field. Gilkey and left Thompson out. We don't know if that's related to that collision at first base mm -hmm. of which Tim was speaking, or if Gilkey is simply a better, significantly better defensive outfielder than Thompson. Probably a combination of the, of the two. Mm -hmm. Dave Hansen will lead off, then Lenny Harris and Mike Sosha. Hansen's one for two, a single and a walk. He's also struck out. those borderline saves. Smith did start with a slider. This is one of those save situations that the critics of the save will say, why should he get a save coming into a game like this? Four to one and only one inning pitch. Tainted. Another slider. And that, uh, again, is why Lee Smith was throwing a lot of sliders a couple of weeks ago, the last time we saw him here on CBS. One's a strike. One and two on Hanson. And that slider probably more indicative of pain in his arm than the other two. If you throw a 2-0 slider with a three-run lead, strange. Another one. Mid-90s thrower, but mm. the last couple of times that we have seen him, that is not what he has been. And that's well hit. Another breaking ball. But it's handled in center by Ray Langford. We hope you'll be tuned to CBS tonight for the CBS Saturday movie, Stephen King's Sometimes They Come Back, starring Tim Matheson and Brooke Adams. It's a dramatic thriller based on the Stephen King short story of psychological terror, and it's followed by Jake and the Fat Man. That's sometimes, tonight on CBS. Sometimes they come back. Is that the, the story of an interdivisional trade, possibly? Coming back to haunt one. Mm. Mm. 
Maybe that's where it started in that movie. No? Perhaps it is. I hope the Dodgers hope sometimes they come back. Part one will be shown here at Dodger Stadium this afternoon. They trail by three in the bottom of the ninth. Lenny Harris sends it foul, low and two the count. 4-1 St. Louis. One out of the base is empty in the bottom of the ninth. Cardinals with a win today would push their record on this road trip to seven and three. Tim, this is the third time we've seen the Cardinals this year, and the pitching is demonstrating that its performances have been no fluke, and it continues to be that way on the mound. You have to like these guys and their chances of hanging in there with Pittsburgh the entire way. Mm -hmm. Montreal, too. Mm -hmm. Montreal actually a half a game in front of the Cardinals going into today's play. I think the National League East has proven it is uh, probably the worst division in baseball as far as their overall talent is concerned. Some people call it parody. I just think it's the weakest division uh, in baseball. He's hit. Lenny Harris the board with one out of the ninth with the Dodgers down by three. That's his first hit of the day. It's the seventh. The Los Angeles hit. They've had a runner on in every inning except the third and the eighth. But they've scored only once. Here's Mike Sosha. Two for three with a bunt single and a single to left. Still not throwing hard in with a strike to social. He has thrown nine sliders in a row to surmise that his arm's still bottom. It looked to be ticketed for center field, but it was a soft line drive, and Jones was able to snare it. The Cardinals are one out away from victory. Meets Webster, center field. Mitch Webster trying to keep Los Angeles alive. He came up as a pinch hitter in the seventh and singled the right center. Another slider up and in. Shallow center. Lankford is there. 